know that a person is not justified by the works of the law but by faith in Jesus Christ so we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ not by the works of the law because by the works of the law no one will be justified If I rebuild what I destroyed, then I really would be a lawbreaker. For truth, for truth, I died with the law, so that I might be of God. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives. in me the life i live now live in the body i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me i do not know that the life of christ of god for right to the lord and gain christ to the lord christ died for nothing in christ 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 So today is November 1st, the day after October 31. We observe it as a Reformation Sunday because it is um it falls on the 503rd anniversary of Protestant Reformation that took place in Wittenberg, Germany. We always reformed. It's not that reformation took place hundreds of years ago. but the goal and the call of reformation is that we will be continually reformed the churches will be reformed daily by the renewing of their minds now october 31 it's a very famous holiday like people celebrate halloween particularly in the western countries everywhere i think i go i drive around and i see that kids going in costumes and it's really interesting to see that the culture is also spreading here in korea christian churches on the other hand they focus on holy wine instead of the scary pumpkins they put some of the symbols of christianity mm-hmm. even look at this picture they cast the face of christ on this mm-hmm. and sometimes they put cross and different uh, christian symbols and they try to celebrate it as holy wine because the attraction of the culture is so strong that christian church somehow want to bridge it but uh, in korea this holiday is getting very popular particularly one article it said that 80% of those in their 20 say that they were interested in participating in the um halloween festivities um my daughter goes to a orange chip and they celebrate halloween i mean it's everywhere there even in korea but what we often don't celebrate or remember is that the same day is also the day of protestant reformation october 31 517 1517 uh, 503 years ago martin luther went up to the doors of the castle church in wittenberg and he nailed 95 points of disagreement that he had with the catholic church he did not intend to start a worldwide movement but he was trying to create a conversation to dispute some of the practices that he perceived to be wrong within the catholic church so it was an attempt to re- reform internally but what luther had never expected that god used that moment as a catalyst to spawn a great reformation that would engulf the entire globe every part of this world will be that the the sound of the hammer will reverberate now when we talk about reformation what do we mean by the word reformation reformation refers to the major split within western christianity which started on october 31 1517 dividing roman catholics and protestants ever since now 
now we have three branches of Christianity. We have Roman Catholics, we have Protestants, and also we have Eastern Christianity. The Eastern Christians already broke from the Rome, Roman Catholics uh, 500 years before Martin Luther. But this split, the Reformation took place only within the Western Christianity. Now, toward the end of the 14th century and the 15th century, already there were signs of protest against the Catholic Church, particularly uh, when the Black Death in Europe, it, it arrived, a lot of people, they, uh, the church also suffered, and they, of course, they tried to reach out and help people who are suffering, but, you know, they it seriously, um, people question the ability of the church to save people. That was one moment, and also, there was also other moments people were trying to get to read the scripture by themselves. And that was leading them to find great truths, earth shattering truths. Now, this, those signs of protest, it, they, that those protests never became a global movement, but still they were significant. Those protesting moments are called proto-reformation. Two important figures of proto-reformation I want to tell you today. One is Wycliffe, John Wycliffe and uh, John Huss, Wycliffe and Huss. Uh, John Wycliffe, he is known as the morning star of the Reformation. Is uh, He was a professor of theology in the University of Oxford, and his followers were called Lollards. You know, it's a very interesting name. It's a Dutch word, which means muttering, people who mutter. They kind of say whispering prayers and read scriptures, mutterers, basically people who whisper words. So John Wycliffe, he took issue with several things in, the, um, in the, the abuses that he saw in the Catholic Church. This is what he said, Holy Scripture is the highest authority for every believer, the standard of faith and the foundation for reform. You see how he was exposing, exposing the, the, the Reformation ideas almost 150 years before Martin Luther. He rejected the authority of Pope. He advocated simple lifestyle, spoke against the luxurious lives of the clergy. He translated Bible from Latin Vulgate because Latin and Vulgate, the Bible was in Latin. It was the official translation of the Roman Catholic Church and he translated the Bible to English. Now, Catholic Church condemned him as heretic and his books were burnt and his bones were exhumed out of the uh, out of the grave and they were burnt and cast, the ashes were cast into the river. So that's what happened to um, Wycliffe. But still, the people who followed him, even after his death, they were called Lollards and they continued to keep the Reformation faith alive in England. At the same time, there was another man in Czech Republic, his name was John Huss. And he was in, influenced by Wycliffe. And John Huss is also a uh, a priest, Catholic priest. Now, this is the place, this is a chapel of Bethlehem in the city of Prague. And that's where John Huss, he preached continually. He was a very famous preacher. In a sense, he was a very popular preacher. Almost thousands of people uh, came to hear his sermons. At least 3,000 of them would gather to hear his sermons. And he pre began to preach Reformation principles in the chapel of Bethlehem in Prague. Huss denounced the moral failings of the clergy, bishops, and even papacy from his pulpit. That was a very dangerous thing to do, but he was very uh, bold and he was influenced by the writing, writings of Wycliffe. Scripture alone is the ultimate authority. Although church authorities banned many works of Wycliffe in 1403 in Czech Republic, Huss translated some of Wycliffe's work into Czech language. You see, the translation would play a major role in Protestant Reformation bringing the truths of God's word in the common language of the people. And Huss was arrested. He was tried as a council of Constance. It was a Catholic council. He was invited to defend his faith, but instead of uh, allowing him to testify, they arrested him. And later he was burnt at a stake. He died as a martyr for the gospel. Wycliffe and John Huss teachings and courage in turn influenced Martin Luther. These two are very important um, forerunners 
for Protestant Reformation. Not only that, they also inspired other reformers, such as Swingley in Switzerland and Calvin in France and Switzerland and Bowser and so on. You know that the Presbyterian Church draws its heritage from Swingley and Calvin. The reformed tradition that our church is part of, it is driving its roots from the reformers, uh, the, the reformers from Swiss reformers, Swingley and Calvin. Now, Jude, Epistle of Jude 1, verse 3, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. Now, why is it important for us to know about Reformation? Why is it important for us to be aware that we have a responsibility to contend for the faith? Bible says that Bible says that once and for all God has delivered this faith to the saints and there are when the powerful forces of the Roman Catholic Church was trying to shut the people out of the truths of God's word and these men of God these people of God they rose up to contend earnestly for the faith they they were faithfully speaking the truth in love bringing out the benefits of that to the members of the congregation, not using scripture for the matters of power, but using scripture for the transformation of individuals and also for the nations. That is what God intended. John has very powerful quote. I would like all of us to read this together. Therefore, faithful Therefore, Christian, Christian, seek the truth, Christian, listen to the truth, listen, learn the truth, learn the, the truth. truth. Love the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Love the truth. Defend the truth, even to death. Even to death. That's John has challenge to all Christian believers. Learn the truth. Love the truth. Defend the truth. And to even unto death. And he surely paid his own, uh, paid the price. Now, what is the truth? that he is talking about. The truth is this. Salvation is in Christ alone, by grace alone, through faith alone. Sola Christus, Sola Gratia, and Sola Fide. These are the three solas of the Protestant Reformation. Later on, we have two more solas added to this, and we have now five solas. Those five solas represent the basic truth of Reformation. When we say in Christ alone, no one can give forgiveness of sins. No one can give salvation. No one can promise, not even the Pope. It is in contrast to the papal authority. When we say by grace alone, we are contrasting it with the Catholic teaching of the, of the um, primacy of grace or gracia prima. We say sola gratia, not prima gratia. It's a, a subtle difference. They say that, yes, God's grace is first, but we have to add to it by our own merits that we earn by good works. No, we say that salvation is in Christ alone and by grace alone, through faith alone. Faith, not good works. Faith in Christ is enough and sufficient for us to get salvation. We are saved. Let's read this verse in um, Ephesians it illustrates this truth very powerfully. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith that not of, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. By grace you have been saved through faith. And it is the gift of God. We cannot earn it through human merits. No matter how much we try. Catholics focus on human efforts. Trying, doing something to add up to the grace of God. So that we can receive salvation. No, we cannot with our own righteousness, please satisfy the righteousness of God. Only God, by the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ on the cross, satisfied the righteousness of God once and for all. And by taking the righteousness of Christ upon ourselves, we are saved through faith. Bible says that if you believe Jesus Christ in your heart, God has raised him from the dead in your heart. And confess it with, with your might, mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. You will be saved. And this is the gift of God. 
and Reformation recovered this idea and brought it to the people. Now, what it means to us today is that we have to contend for the faith earnestly, the faith that is delivered to the saints for all times. It's delivered to us. We are the heirs of Reformation. We are the heirs of those people who walked before us. John Wycliffe, John Huss, Martin Luther, Calvin, Swingley, and many other hundreds and thousands of reformers and believers, true believers who walked in faith. They all challenge us to love the truth and live for the truth and defend the truth all through our lives. May God help us to walk in truth and love the truth and defend the truth every day. Amen. Amen. Let's sing the song together, the closing hymn. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, once again. We thank you for your grace that has sustained us over the past. Thank you for redeeming us and cleansing us and saving us by the blood of Jesus. Lord, we have been saved by grace through faith in you alone. And thank you for this wonderful gift to all of us. Help us, O oh God, to draw closer to you every day, to love the truth, learn the truth, listen to the truth. And as Jesus says, I am the truth, and Lord, to love him more than anything else, and always dedicate ourselves to the pursuit of the truth of Jesus Christ. Amen. Transform us, O oh Lord, so that we can be like you in our thoughts, in our behavior, in our actions. Help us, O oh God. We remember this day, all the giants, great giants of faith, and Lord, what a wonderful legacy they have left behind for us to emulate, to be inspired. Help us to also, Lord, hold on to the truth and to defend it with all our hearts. In doing so, we will bring you glory to you alone. Lord, I pray for our, our members as they are going, uh, as they would go to the respective workplaces and I pray that, Lord, your hand will be upon them throughout the week that is ahead, Lord. Keep them safe. Keep them away from every dangers and harms. I pray for our nation, this nation of Korea, every nation in the world. As the world is going through this pandemic, 
I pray that, Lord, send forth the rains of healing to heal the nations of God. That there be a great awakening, turning towards forsaking of the wicked ways and turning to the Lord, the giver of life. Help us to shine the gospel truth, the light of the gospel into every part of the world. And Lord, be the witnesses and testimonies of God's grace wherever we are. Do not send us without the fullness of your grace. Surround each and every one of your people, God. Bless and prosper them, their families, their works of hand, their businesses and everything that they do. Continue to be glorified in our lives. We give you all the praise, Father. In Jesus' name, I ask this in prayer. Amen. Amen. Now may the Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Heavenly Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may rest and abide with all of us and enable us to love the truth and defend the truth all our lives. Amen. Amen. Okay, may God bless all of us and Semba Reformanda, always reforming. <laughs> <laughs>